Hello and welcome back to another episode of A Cozy Christmas Podcast. I'm your host, Art, and I am in the Christmas spirit. So this week we had a little bit of a surprise snow. (laughs) All I can think of is the line from A Phantom Menace when Palpatine says, a surprise to be sure, but a welcome one. So yeah, that's where I'm at right now. I'm quoting Palpatine about snow. Hey, it's 2020. Anything's possible. Anyway, welcome to our episode. I've got some fun things ahead. We'll hear about the contest winner and the memory that she shared. We'll also hear from special guest Catherine Burgess and her forthcoming book, Snow Globe Santa. And then Gracie and I hang out and chat. Let's deck the halls. I'm happy to report that we do have a contest winner, and her name is Rachel, and she sent me a a short but very sweet Christmas memory. So Rachel, I'm I'm so grateful that you enjoy the show and that you took the time to send this in. I'll get the card and ornament out to you as soon as I can remember to actually go to the post office. So probably sometime in January. Here's what Rachel says. Growing up, my siblings and I teased my dad about being a Scrooge because Christmas wasn't his favorite, even though he made an effort for us. I, however, have always been a Christmas fanatic. One year after I'd moved away from our home and gotten married, I came home for Christmas to find that he decked the house out in outdoor lights just for me. He was giddy with excitement to see my response. I forgot about it until my dad passed away, but now it's one of my favorite memories. And Rachel, that, thank you for that. That's, you know, that's just a, a, a small thing that her dad was able to do, but it brought her, you know, it brought Rachel so much joy. And as she shared, now that her father's passed away, that's a special memory for her. You know, we can take a look at our own life and the people in our life to think, uh, what little thing can we do to help their day, to encourage them, to make them smile? You know, maybe it means letting them put up the Christmas tree early. Maybe it means um, baking some special cookies for someone or or giving them a phone call. The movie that's coming out, The Christmas Ride, that I talked about a few episodes ago, that film has really got me thinking still about how Christmas is not the same for everyone. And boy, we can do a little thing just to bring some cheer to somebody. I, I think that's such a worthwhile effort. There is a lot of hate in our world today and... One of the best things that we can do to change that is to be kind and to take those moments to bring somebody some happiness. I hope that you're able to do that and that you can think of some fun things to do to brighten someone's day. Rachel's story reminded me a bit of my stepmom. I was able to spend a couple of Christmases with her before she passed away. She had a love for the holiday for sure. Uh, My dad remarried after I was uh, out of the house, or I I didn't get to see her until I was an adult. I can remember spending that first Christmas with her and my dad. You know, I was sleeping in in my stepbrother's bedroom, and then we get woken up in the morning by by my dad and my stepmom, and they come into the bedroom, and, and they're dressed in Christmas pajamas, just crazy outfit. They have a jingle bells and with them and my stepmom has a Santa hat on and they're all excited to get us out of bed and I that's one of my favorite Christmas memories well I have so many favorite Christmas memories but that one is just always something really special uh that first Christmas I was able to share uh with my with my new stepmom my dad and my stepmom's love for Christmas is is contagious so Rachel thank you so much for sharing that memory and I will again get that ornament out to you very soon Now, as you know, I've been looking for ways to do Christmas differently this year, and our special guest for the day, Catherine Burgess, has written a book that I think will help us in that endeavor. Her book is called Snow Globe Santa. Breaking news, there's been an accident at the North Pole and Santa is stuck in a snow globe. Will Santa get to visit all the good boys and girls before Christmas this year? Will he get out in time to deliver presents? A creative solution to keep the tradition of Santa Claus alive. This holiday season may look different, but we can always share the joy of the Christmas spirit. And that's the blurb on the back of this, of Snow Globe Santa, written by Catherine Burgess. And it was my pleasure to interview her. We talk about her book, 
and about Christmas, and I hope you enjoy that. I will say a word about our interview. We, I was having a little bit of audio trouble again. She's reading an excerpt from the book, and her voice blanks out for a minute. So don't readjust your earphones. That's that's my computer acting up. Also, if you have any if you have any littles within earshot, uh, we do talk about Santa Claus and his appearances in malls and things like that. And you might want to give it a pre-listen just to make sure that we're being careful about protecting the magic. And uh, of course, we also talk about Santa Claus being stuck in a snow globe. So, and and that might be frightening or disconcerting for some of the uh, younger listeners. Um, So parents, you can make that decision. Just wanted to give you a heads up on that. And now here's the interview with Catherine Burgess. Well, I'm here with a special guest today. Uh, now, you may have heard a lot and, and seen online. People are talking about Christmas being canceled, or there's a lot of events that have been canceled this year. Uh, I know I, there's been some that I wanted to go to, but ended up being canceled. I'm with author Catherine Burgess. Uh, she's written a book that I think is going to help fight against that idea that Christmas is canceled. Catherine, welcome to uh, the Cozy Christmas. I'm glad to have you on. Thank you so much for having me, Art. I'm thrilled to be here as well. So tell us a bit about your book and your website, snowglobesanta.com. Yes. So this past summer, I first of all, I have three little kids and all three of them are believers and excited for the holiday season ahead. And it just broke my heart to think that some of those special traditions that they love might be canceled, like you were talking about. And And I just knew that we didn't want to let that happen. We wanted to see what we could save uh, while still providing a safe experience uh, for both Santa Clauses and families alike. So I sat down, I wrote a book called The Snow Globe Santa, which we really hope will be a creative solution to save that magical Santa experience this upcoming holiday season. And the story itself is a creative take on why the Santa Claus looks di- or Santa Claus experience looks different. And it's a fun way for parents to talk to their kids and also keep that magic in the experience. You know, Santa has survived the bubonic plague, smallpox, and many, many other different pandemics or diseases. Yeah. And so he's he's not suddenly afraid of COVID-19. We all know that we still need to protect him. So we we have this story to kind of put a creative twist to everything. Myself and others have said Christmas is going to be different this year, but that's not a bad thing. I have been on your website and was looking at the pictures and everything. And, you know, there's a part of me that's sad to see him in a snow globe, but (laughs) also to know that a lot of Santas were being canceled. And now here's a way that we can get Santa in and keep him safe. Because he's got a lot of work to do Christmas Eve. <laughs> he does. He's a busy man. <laughs> yeah. You know, we were talking to a whole bunch of different communities this summer, Santa communities, and an overwhelming amount was just afraid, and understandably so, to go out and do this this holiday season. You know, one Santa I spoke to was with 53,000 different families in a single year. And with how this spreads and everything, it, it, it's not worth the risk to not be protected. But at the same time, there are ways to be creative and to save this and and to serve our communities and our families. Are you a, a writer? Have you written before or uh, what, what, right. what have you written? <laughs> Thank you. Good question. So I am actually a professional photographer right now. I'm working as a photographer. I was an elementary education teacher with a reading and language arts specialization. And then in college, I actually did journalism and mass communication as well. So writing has always been inside of me, but it was maybe deeper down. <laughs> so, so it has <laughs> yeah. recently come out um, as this is my first book that I have published, but not the first story that I I've written. Yeah. Uh, my, my daughter is in sixth grade. Mm-hmm. And so she's about ready to leave behind the uh, grade school stuff. Oh. And, and it's a lot of ways she has, so. oh. <laughs> but we uh, uh, we've really appreciated all of our, our teachers that she's had. Yeah. Uh, are, are, so are you still teaching at all? Or, or is this kind of where you're at now? Yep. I'm not teaching right now. I am a, a military spouse. So we have moved everywhere from Colorado to Germany to Virginia, all over. And um, and I stopped teaching when I married my husband. I did a little bit for a little while. Uh, and then I, I stayed home and did the photography path. And that has been 
quite fun. Your book, I I saw it, it's illustrated. It's it's for. Uh, is there an age group in mind you have? You know, I think that it's appropriate for any age group. Obviously, it's definitely um, targeted towards our Santa believers. So you know, zero through ten. However, I think that the fun part is is that we've all had. I don't know if this is fun, but we've all had a very interesting 2020. <laughs> And, um, (laughs) and this is, I think, something that we're going to remember something that we're going to look back and say, ah, that was the year Santa was in a snow globe. (laughs) And so I think, you know, anybody can really, you know, have this as like, almost like a time capsule or memory from this holiday season. It's it's a very 2020 Christmas token. Yeah, (laughs) yeah, definitely. (laughs) Definitely. So uh, who did who did the artwork for your book? Yes, so I worked with Atlantic Publishing Group and they had us actually partner with a couple of different illustrators who did the work for the book. So they, they've they hired out and then we really solidified what we wanted our Santa to look like and the images to look like. And we had a, a combination of different illustrators come together to, to help with that. Oh, neat. Yeah. Now, did you have any uh, feedback or uh, involvement in how it was going to look or did you just hope for the best. <laughs> no, I've been there every step of the way. Absolutely. And, Good. and I have some design experience, you know, set with photography and everything. And so I did put my own touches into each of the illustrations so that they really looked like we wanted them to, but the primary um, bulk of the, the actual creation of our, our people and everything was done by professionals in that space. I know on your website, I see a lot of that illustration. Is that kind of what the illustrations will look like in your book? Exactly. Yep. Those are some sneak peeks to what you'll see in the story. Yeah. Well, they're great. Mm -hmm. I I love art Mm -hmm. and painting, drawing and that kind of things. So I'm I'm just looking at that and I'm thinking this will be a good, uh, a good book to have. Yeah. Yeah. You know, when we started, so when we, I wrote the story in probably towards the end of July, early August is when I, I was doing most of the writing. I had imagined, you know, going back to that that, like 1960s classic Santa Claus with the rosy cheeks and the hand painted pictures. Um, And as I was calling around to different publishers, you know, a lot of them said, we love your story. We'll have it published in two years for you. (laughs) And I was like, we can't do that. This is for this holiday season. It is a 2020 story. Uh, And then I came across Atlantic Publishing Group and they have been amazing. And what usually takes one to two years, they were able to push through in about two to three months. And that's why we've had a team of illustrators. And we tried to mimic those 1916 1960s paintings of Santa Claus and everything. But obviously those can take, you know, months to create in and of itself, just one painting. So we, um, we did our best to mimic that while still um, being able to have it available for, for families for this year. Well, uh, and considering how quickly you've got things together, it looks remarkable. Thank you. Yes. Very, very well put together. Been a yeah. Whirlwind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Listeners of my podcast know I love stories, and and you said you'd be willing to read us an excerpt from your book. We would love to hear that. If you had a, a small excerpt there, absolutely. So just to give you a little bit of background, Santa had been busy at the North Pole. He went on a quick vacation, and he came back, and he saw a surprise, and he was so excited. It says a secret surprise was under creation. Beautiful snow globes were taking formation. Virginia, Nevada, New York, and more. They created globes for places from shore to shore. No need to leave to see his favorite places. With a shake of a globe, he'd see all different spaces. Santa was so happy, he chuckled with glee. And that's when it happened, unfortunately. For a globe of his home was getting a final touch and Santa leaned over just a little too much. He slipped, he fell, and at that very same moment, an elf sprinkled magic dust, the very last component. With a poof and a puff, The elf closed it whole, and Santa was stuck. No way to get out, no way to leave, for the magic elf dust would last till Christmas Eve. So you'll have to read the story to figure out what happens and everything. But just to assure all the parents out there, he does make it out in time for Christmas Eve. And he is determined (laughs) to come see all the good boys and girls this holiday season. Um, So it's a very uplifting story, a fun read, and um, a great way to just, you know, talk about 
this holiday season. I appreciate the heads up too on, on the ending. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, uh, well, my, uh, my daughter, especially when she was younger, I, we would read stories and she would get so caught up in it, you know, that if there was something scary, she's like, I can't do the story. Yeah. Don't, it's going to end bad. Yeah. <laughs> this is terrible. No, it's not oh. scary. I've had a few people say, oh no, <laughs> does he get out? How's he going to deliver the presents? And don't worry, he does. And oh, good. you're not, you know, the kids won't be on the edge of their seat too long. <laughs> okay. Well, a, a little edge of their seat is fine, right. but <laughs> exactly. she, she just uh, uh, internalizes things so much. It, oh, it, it's, yeah. it's so funny. It's like, it's okay. Great. You know, Grace, every, every movie has its scary moments. This is fine. <laughs> right. right. Yeah. <laughs> Quite the imagination. Oh, <laughs> Oh, she does. Yes. Yeah. All right. And, and uh, if folks want to um, check that out and purchase uh, the book, they're on your website. You can head to my website, snowglobesanta.com. And there's a couple different links that you'll see. It says buy the book. Uh, and then also we are on Amazon right now. If you look for the Snow Globe Santa and you'll be able to find us there as well. Now, is there a, a pref- preferred way like Amazon versus your website or is it all going to be the same does it matter it's all pretty much the same now that we have the book we'll be shipping them out um, as soon as we get get them here I think any day now so really one in the same either way is great I recommend this book. I mean, I haven't read it yet, guys, full disclosure, but uh, it looks really great. And the the excerpt you read was was real nice. So I, I think that'll be a fun book for for uh, folks. And then I saw also that you have you actually have giant snow globes that can for Santa when he's visiting, he can be in. Yeah, you know, it's actually quite timely, our conversation today, because we've been working with a couple manufacturers since the summer, but today we opened up a pop-up tent and included in that pop-up tent package is all the ways that you can turn it into a snow globe, plus two copies of the book and some different things as well. So our goal really is to, to make this available nationwide so that families have that opportunity for a safe Santa experience and a lot of different professional photographers, Santas, um, HOAs, country clubs, uh, restaurants, all these different places that offer that experience. This is a really simple way to create that barrier and create that kind of safe space in order to have a meaningful interaction uh, and Santa experience. Yeah. And I was thinking, you know, Libraries would be a great thing. I know one of our local libraries would be, a, that would be a fantastic addition. Absolutely. And also too, you know, there's some different drive-through experiences that you could really light the globe up and it would be, you know, it would just be magical for, for families to be able to visit. I guess uh, switching gears a little bit, I'd like to talk to my guests too about their love for Christmas. And it seems obvious you have a great love for Christmas. Absolutely. How, how did your, uh, what's your history with Christmas? How did you uh, fall in love with it? You know, Christmas has always been a really magical time. I grew up in Minnesota and we had snow every Christmas. And I remember the lights on the house. We put the lights up before the snow. So you weren't too cold putting the lights up (laughs) Uh and every house would be decorated. And I think one of my favorite memories from Christmas, we would always go to my grandmother's house and my grandmother lived in kind of like a condo community. So um, there's a few different like apartments or condos, you know, within that, um, that that floor. And so my cousins and I, what we would do, we'd go over there and all the adults would be talking. We'd be sneaking candy and (laughs) we'd go out into the hallway and we would sing Christmas carols outside the homes on Christmas Eve or outside the doors of all the different homes on their floor. And it was just so much fun and such a wonderful memory um, of, you know, a time that really is about those different traditions and keeping that magic and the wonder and everything of Christmas. You know, some of the things I did as a kid, I I thought were boring, Mm -hmm. but now those are the things that are fun as an adult, like caroling and I don't want to go caroling. (laughs) Right. I know. I know. (laughs) Yeah. And now it's like, no, please, let's go. Come on, everyone. This This is Christmas. (laughs) That's right. (laughs) And it seems that everybody this year is up for Christmas a little bit early, just with, you know, this, how this year has gone. And so it's time to bring some joy. That's right. That's right. Yeah. I, I've already got Christmas music playing. Oh, yeah. um, I got to keep it in my headphones though, because not everyone in my family <laughs> is on board, on board with that. <laughs> yeah. 
yeah uh, yeah so do you have uh like a favorite tradition or a, or a special memory i mean other than what you've shared yeah. that was a nice memory you know the only time that my mother would make fudge was at christmas and so i think she made the best fudge and i have that recipe now i've been tempted to make it year round but you know doing all that christmas baking and everything especially the fudge and everything is is probably my next favorite uh, tradition that we have. My grandmother would make fudge. She would send it out at Christmas time, you know, and, and she would always send it in these or boxes you'd get checks in. Oh, funny. Uh, you, yeah. you know, and so they're little square, like little bricks. Yeah. And and she would just reuse those and put her fudge in it. Yeah. Uh, and, and oh, it was so good. Yeah. And then uh, fortunately, uh, she had passed away in uh, 2001. You know, now it's like, oh, I won't get grandma's fudge anymore. It, the, the recipe was passed on to other family members and they've made it, but it just wasn't the same. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a little something different about it. I don't know what she did to it. Uh, I think it was probably all the all the love she she had for us. She put into Absolutely. it. Absolutely. <laughs> grandma's touch. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. 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 So fudge was and, and is a big part of of our um, goodie table mm-hmm. <laughs> for sure. Absolutely. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Well, do you have um, any exciting plans for your family for Christmas this year? You know, we are staying here for now. We're going to celebrate with Emily, stay safe and stay um, not isolated, but socially distanced and and hopefully also, you know, bring the bring the snow globe Santa to our own community and and do as much as we can with sharing that that love and, and that experience. Yeah, and hopefully uh, we'll get to see Santa at some point, yeah. safe in his snow globe. And <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. So you know, again, if anyone uh, wants to go and check that out, they go to snowglobesanta.com. Exactly. All right. Yep, snowglobesanta.com. You can see our book, and you can also go to Santa's workshop or click on any of the links that lead you to Santa's snow globe. And now those will be open for about seven to ten days, and then we'll be fulfilling orders. Okay. Uh, yeah, well, I'm, I'm going to forward that to my library and <laughs> see if yes. see what they can if they can work We'd out love something. That. So, yeah, definitely. Yeah. All right. Well, Catherine, thank you for uh, stopping by and and uh, sharing this book. It's available for order again now. If you want a fun Christmas story to read to your kids, maybe to help them through the the different Christmas this year, uh, this will be one to, to read. So, thank you again, Catherine. Thanks so much for having me, Art. You bet. So we don't have to let Christmas be canceled this year. There are so many new traditions we can accomplish. And uh, I think this is going to be a wonderful, as she said, uh, a wonderful time capsule of our crazy year. But she brought up an interesting point that Santa has survived many, many plagues before, and he will survive this one too. What better way to do that than in a snow globe? Just let me know if you're able to go to that. I'd send me a picture and I'll, uh, I'll put, put it on the website. Uh, so folks can see it. And now it's time to check in with the more popular host of this show, my daughter, Grace. We're going to have some goodies today and talk about Christmas. All right, we're back in the kitchen. Merry Christmas! Wait, sorry. Gracie's here. We've got a bear with pathetic jingle bells. So I saw this recipe. We're going to try for another snack. The apple pie, did it turn out good? Oh yeah. yeah, delicious. Really? So, so good, we made a second one. Well, he made a second one. All right, so we're gonna use some leftover tortillas to uh, make some chips, but we're gonna put cinnamon, sugar, and butter on them. So it's gonna be kind of like a cookie type thing? Um, well, a chippy cookie kind of thing, I guess. Yeah, like if you think of tortilla chips, it's just like that, but they're not salty, they're sweet, basically. All right. I've never really tried Here's any. Here's a pair of scissors. I was hoping to find cookie cutters because that's why these were going to be fun. Somebody had taken like pumpkin shaped cookie cutters and cut out the tortillas and then put butter on both sides, sprinkle with cinnamon and sugar, chuck it into the oven for five to ten minutes or so. But we could not find ours. For... No, cookie cutters are missing for some we'll reason. We'll find them. They're probably somewhere deep in the depths of the basement. And yes, you looked, but I look for them all the time and I can never find them. They always seem to, I don't know. They're, they've disappeared. So we're just making triangle shapes. With our scissors. It's actually fun cutting tortillas. I don't know why. Uh, okay. We're gonna cut some tortillas shapes, or no, triangle shapes. 
Okay, how many do... I don't think we need no. like 700 million. This might be too many. Oh, well. <laughs> the more the better. We can have... So, you'll want to take some melted butter. Mm-mm. Mm, delicious. Drink, don't drink melted butter, you guys. I mean, it would kill you, but... It wouldn't kill you, but it probably won't be very yummy. So, what we do first is butter them up. So, we, so we get some butter. Paint, basically butter. Basically paint butter on the tortilla strips. So basically, it's very exciting. Makes for great podcasting. You just paint butter on a tor on a tortilla slice. And then probably... Mm. Oh, um, why don't you get the cinnamon sugar out and then put it in a, like a plate bowl. Plate bowl? Well, put it on a plate. Like just dump it all out on a plate because we're going to need to... Um... It's better in a bowl. We just dumped powdered, or not powdered sugar, sorry, uh, cinnamon and sugar on a plate, and now we're flipping our buttered tortillas and we'll on just them. And I'm on. now licking some off my finger. So I'm gonna. <laughs> mm, mm, oh, yeah, this is good. All right, so. We're gonna French toast every year for Christmas. I am going to paint the chips. Gracie, you dip them in the cinnamon and sugar. And then... On it. Hey, look not... out, look out, bear. Do you ever. Have you guys ever put just butter on a tortilla with cinnamon and sugar? Because I've done that before. This is basically what this is when it's not cooked. Right. This, this I used to love that, but I only get it occasionally. Cause it should make for a yummy snack. Yeah. Hopefully. Not very uh. healthy, though, so don't eat this every day. Oh, it's not healthy at all. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know if there's anything healthy about this. There isn't really. Well, I'm sad I couldn't find the cookie cutters because... We could have shaped one like the Christmas tree. The recipes I saw were all shaped like pumpkins, and I thought it'd be fun to do it with a Christmas tree or something. But, you know, at least we have everything else we need to make it. My hands are going to be greasy. It's fine. We can wash them. Mine are covered in sugar and butter. Oh, well, see, then you can just lick your hands clean, which is probably not a good thing to do in a time of COVID. Oh, can you believe this month we will have been in quarantine for seven months? That just, no, we've well, had, not quarantine exactly, but. We've just been dealing with this for a while, yeah. Not exactly quarantine. We've kind of stepped out of quarantine. Actually, though, I'm in quarantine right now because, well, I'm online schooled right now. Yep. And we don't know yet. It's Friday, so. Well, the school. They're making probably decisions like right now or tomorrow actually, or yeah, so. Yeah, there's a meeting right now, actually. So we don't know what's happening, about that. but, you know. <laughs> so they'll let us know what school is going to look like next week. But I just decided to be safe like quarantine because kids basically all over the school. Like there were, I'm in sixth grade, but kids in the fourth grade had gotten COVID and they're not too far from my classroom. So I just want to be safe, but you know, feeling fine. Just besides some allergies, you know what I mean? It's you! But I've had a bad case of allergies over quarantine, but you know, it's allergy season and just... Before you know it, flu season's going to come, so we're going to have flu season, and colds, Whoa. and allergies, and COVID, and we're not going to know <laughs> anything anymore. And and this is why we're making chips with butter and cinnamon and sugar on them. And Dad, you have received a COVID test, haven't you? Yeah, I had one a while ago, and it was negatory. COVID tests don't look very pleasant. Don't they, like, shove something up your nose? And then, like, spin it around and for, like, 10 seconds or something like that? I don't know. They take, like, a 20-foot-long Q-tip and shove um, about 18 feet of it up your nose. Okay, not that bad, but everyone... <laughs> I say it's like, you know, when you get tested for strep, like a strep swab kind of mm -hmm. thing. Yeah, that's what it looks like. That's what I feel like. Can they be on top of each other? Um, uh, no, or, I think they need to be just okay. next to each other. We're running out of room. Well, I got a new one going over here. So. Oh, okay. That's Dude! Right. We'll sprinkle oh, some more. Oh my word! This thing was like half full and it's almost gone. <laughs> that's all right. We'll sprinkle some more on before we... Just Definitely use all this up first. I don't want to use all mom's sugar, but, you know, we can easily make more. We have sugar and cinnamon, so that's all it takes. Mom's at work, so what she doesn't know won't hurt her. This is messy, too. This really is messy. If you like to run your hands around and slamming grunk, this looks like it's the... Recipe for you. The recipe, yep. We're already... Oh, come on, we have to fit, like, 
five more on that pan. We got this. And they fit. So I'm just going to sprinkle some more over the top. Dad, we don't need that much. Sure we do. I don't... No, I'm going to eat so much I'm going to be sick and not hungry for supper in like an hour yeah, and a half. Supper, schmupper. Probably what I need is a little more cinnamon on that. Really? Actually. Di oh, cinnamon. I'm Just like, don't put too much on. Cinnamon is really strong. I saw a video of some idiots doing something. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me they how look, you really feel. They, um, they had a big spoonful of cinnamon, like a real spoon. Like, oh, yeah. And they filled it past, like, the top of the spoon with cinnamon and just shoved it in their mouths. I'm like, why would you do that, you weirdos? And then they were, you know, coughing and hacking up yeah, cinnamon. That's not that's not safe. Um, it's not? Well, any, anything like that, no. I'm like... If you see it done on the internet, it's probably a bad idea to do at home. Yeah, All right. but, like, it was, like, a good spoon. I am... Um, it was like up to here, Dad. The chips into the oven. Okay, we're gonna let that cook for a bit. All right, see ya. Okie dokie. I'm getting oh, that's, that's not too bad. We cooked about 10 minutes at 350 degrees, so let's try this out. Mmm, I I like that very much. Mmm, that's a ho 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 for me. <laughs> you not like it that much? It's okay. It's okay. Well, I like it. It's just. I really like super crunchy. As I'm getting into the middle of it, it's getting softer. Well, I like these a lot. That's a, that's a nice snack. All right. Well, before we go, Grace, one more question. What? What's white, furry, and shaped like a tooth? A molar bear. A molar bear. Ha 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 ha. Well, that's uh, that's that's dad jokes with with dad. <laughs> All right. Well, you we will. Now, um, stay safe. And let you guys go, and we are going to finish eating these chips. And you all have a have good, good day. day. Yep. Bye. For today's story time, I'm going to read just a small excerpt from Charles Dickens's The Pickwick Papers. Uh, that was his first novel he wrote, and it began to be published in 1836. The novel was published by Chapman and Hall in monthly installments, and it is with this novel that Dickens shot to fame. They are humorous, episodic tales of Mr. Pickwick and his friends who form what they call the Pickwick cl Club. They are referred to as the Pickwickians. Just imagine portly English gentlemen out having adventures. The book is hilarious, especially with the character by the name of Sam Weller, who um, shares the same name as our guest from last week, but as far as I know, no relation. Sam Weller is uh, Mr. Pickwick's uh, cockney servant. He has a sharp wit. I hope to read some more uh, from the Pickwick papers because they have some Christmas adventures. That being said, I'm not sure I can do a uh, Cockney accent that would sound any better than Bert's from Mary Poppins. So I might just stick with my uh, American one. England has all the all the good accents. <laughs> anyway, uh, I hope you enjoy this excerpt. Um, so I, I'm releasing three other short stories I read this week, uh, including one from the Pickwick Papers as well. So I, I'm going to keep it short today, but this will give you just a taste of the humor that can be found in this novel. Let's uh, sit back and relax and enjoy a Christmas story. Excerpt from The Pickwick Papers by Charles Dickens Chapter 28 A good-humored Christmas chapter containing an account of a wedding and some other sports beside, which, although in their way, even as good customs as marriage itself, are not quite so religiously kept up in these degenerate times. As brisk as bees, if not altogether as light as fairies, did the four Pickwickians assemble on the morning of the 22nd day of December, in the year of grace in which these, their faithfully recorded adventures, were undertaken and accomplished. Christmas was close at hand, and in all his bluff and hearty honesty, it was the season of hospitality, merriment, and open-heartedness. 
The old year was preparing like an ancient philosopher to call his friends around him and amidst the sound of feasting and revelry to pass gently and calmly away. Gay and merry was the time, and right gay and merry were at least four of the numerous hearts that were gladdened by its coming. And numerous indeed are the hearts to which Christmas brings a brief season of happiness and enjoyment. How many families whose members have been dispersed and scattered far and wide in the restless struggles of life are then reunited and meet once again in that happy state of companionship and mutual goodwill, which is a source of such pure and unalloyed delight, and one so incompatible with the cares and sorrows of the world, that the religious belief of the most civilized nations and the rude traditions of the roughest savages alike number it among the first joys of a future condition of existence provided for the blessed and happy. How many old recollections and how many dormant sympathies does Christmas time awaken. We write these words now, many miles distant from the spot at which, year after year, we met on that day, a merry and joyous circle. Many of the hearts that throbbed so gaily then have ceased to beat. Many of the looks that shone so brightly then have ceased to glow. The hands we grasped have grown cold. The eyes we sought have hid their luster in the grave. And yet, the old house, the room, the merry voices and smiling faces, the jest, the laugh, the most minute and trivial circumstances connected with those happy meetings crowd upon our mind at each recurrence of the season, as if the last assemblage had been but yesterday. Happy, happy Christmas that can win us back to the delusions of our childish days, that can recall to the old man the pleasures of his youth, that can transport the sailor and the traveler thousands of miles away back to his own fireside and his quiet home. And that's just a small selection from a uh, Pickwick Papers by Charles Dickens. We will hear more from Mr. Pickwick and the Pickwickians in future episodes. Well, I hope you ha will have a happy and safe Halloween this year. And then comes the great excitement of November and December and the lead up to Christmas. There are things I've got planned for the podcast I'm looking forward to. We're, we'll have some more guests on and it's just going to be a great time. And I'm really looking forward to spending that with you. If you have a Christmas memory or a favorite tradition you want to tell me about, please send me an email to cozychristmaspodcast at gmail.com and I'll feature that on the, on a future episode. And if you do, I'll send you a Christmas card and a podcast sticker. All the cool kids are doing it, so you need to get on board. <laughs> uh, but I, I really do love hearing from you and that's part of what makes this time special is to be able to share uh, what makes Christmas special to you. If you like what we're doing here and want to help support the podcast, uh, you can go to my Ko-fi page and for the price of a cup of coffee, you can help the podcast out. Also, I do have an ornament left on Etsy if you're interested in purchasing one. As soon as I get some time, I'm going to be painting some more. Uh, I'll have some more Scrooge ornaments up and then I'm thinking I will do a couple of other ones as well, like maybe one of the ghosts of Christmas and then there's a couple of cartoon critters I'm thinking of painting as well. Um, so we'll see what I have time for. Search for Cozy Christmas Podcast on Etsy and you can you can see the ornaments I'll have there. And the links will be in the show notes as well as uh, the links to Catherine's website. All right, so we're heading into uh, November now and we're leaving the spooky season behind and we're heading into the thankful season. So we, we will be talking about that and many other things in the weeks ahead between now and Christmas. So you all take care and I'll see you next week. Remember to be kind and to share your stories. And as always, there is nothing in the world more irresistibly contagious than laughter and good humor. So have a very Merry Christmas.